Hi everybody, Will Alexander from Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips, brought to you by Canine Chronicle TV and Pro Plan Nutrition That Performs. This week on the interview chair, we have the incomparable Mr. Elliot Weiss. So sit back and enjoy an afternoon with Elliot. Hi everybody, here today in the in the interview chair we have Mr. Elliot Weiss, legend of dog shows. Hi Elliot, how are you? I'm fine, how are you Will? You look good there. I'm doing great, doing great. Trying great. To, trying to keep busy. Are you keeping yourself busy through this crazy time? Oh, it is crazy, isn't it? Oh, for sure, for sure it is. I'm getting bored silly, but it is, it, that's about it. <laughs> Me too. I'm trying to stay busy doing things like this. but It's working, it's fun. All right. Let's get right into it. How old were you? For, how old were you when you first started in dogs, Elliot? Oh wow! <laughs> well, I think I was thirteen or fourteen. That's that's. I'll give you this the short the short list on that. I was in school and I was always good at art. And my mother, the teacher, told my mother I should pursue this. She thought she had a Picasso on her hands or something. I don't know. I was going to art. I was going to take art classes. I was taking art classes in Manhattan. I lived in the North Bronx, and the teacher said, "If you want to do some good life studies, the Westminster Kettle Club's coming to town." So I came home that that Saturday. I remember my uncle was in the house. He was a dentist. Lived up the road from us, up the street from us, actually. And he said, you know, if you want to go, Monday my office is closed. If you want to go, I'll take you to the Westminster Kennel Club in the morning, and then we'll go see a movie in the afternoon that I want to see. The movie was Ivanhoe. That's how long ago this was. <laughs> and, it was, and, it was the, and the dog show was at the old garden, not, not the garden that's there, that's there now. Uh, all I can say is I fell in love with the whole scene. I didn't. I didn't get involved in the dog game for a number of years after that. I think I was eighteen or nineteen. How did that start? Well, a friend of the family's bought a borzoi. In fact, at that time, I thought they called them Russian wolfhounds. I don't even think they used borzoi yet. And she said, "We're going to go. I'm going to a puppy match. Will you come with me?" And I had nothing to do, so we went to the puppy match. And she was about as athletic as the chair I'm sitting on. And she hands me the lead and says, do this. So we watched, and I, and I did show the bitch. And she turned out to be a pretty good bitch anyway. In fact, she came from Canada from Audrey Bembo's breeding. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, no, no, this, this, I guess she did, really did a homework. And that's the first dog I finished. I was a sophomore in college at the time. And I didn't want to, I was taking a business course at the request of my family. And all of a sudden I woke up and said, I don't want to, I don't want to do this the rest of my life. And I almost got disowned at the time, but I said, I'll finish the semester and then make a decision. Well, I think it was Bucks County. I went to a dog show with the Borzoi, with, 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 I called her my aunt, but she was just, you know, just out of respect. And I opened in the Gazette, and there's a pen in the back, help wanted show assistant, Ted Young Jr. Uh. <laughs> I didn't even know who Teddy was at the time, Will. And I asked someone, where, where, where do I find him? And I watched Cockers for a while, and he was showing Cockers, of course. And I went up and I said, is this position filled? And he looked at me and said, no, we talked. And I said, I gotta finish the semester about six, seven weeks away, but..." Then I'd like to, you know, if it's open, I'm willing to learn what, and that's the start of it. Wow. <laughs> so, I didn't know from cockers, I didn't know from brushing dogs, uh, but I fell in love with the whole scene. For sure. And that got me going. <laughs> and from there you went from, well, how long did you work for Ted? Almost three years. Mm -hmm. In fact, 
Oh, a good three years. And what? Had a, quite the experience. I'm sure. <laughs> well, were, what happened after the three years? After the three years, I hooked up with Bobby Fisher. Well, no, let me go back. After the three years, I had a couple of people that I wanted to show dogs for. And at that time, you didn't show dogs for anything unless you had a license. So I talked to Teddy, and he said, make an appointment and go see Mr. Brumby face to face. I said, you're close enough. I lived about two hours, two and a half hours out of Manhattan at the time. And I went to see Mr. Brumby. I'm going to tell you, I was very impressed because after I made the appointment, I guess he made a bunch of phone calls. He knew more about me than I knew about myself at the particular time. <laughs> but he said, well, what would you like to do? He says, I'm going to give you a trial. You say, you know, I'll give you seven or eight breeds. And if you do well on that, you'll come back and I'll give you a group. And that's how it started. Wow. I, had a, I had Bedlington clients at the time. Giant Schnauzer client at the time. And a cocker client at the time. English cockers, I should say. So you went on your own then? And I went on my own. Yep. So where did, where, where did Fisher come in, in on this? Where did Bobby come in on this? Well, Bobby and, Bobby and I were good friends when he was working with Jamie. And then Bobby had just started showing dogs also. He kind of about six months before I did. And what can I say? We were both kids. And both, I, you know, if I was in college, I'd say he was, my, he was my study partner. Because all we did was talk about dogs and find people that would answer questions we, we had. And we used to travel to Cliffy Hallmark quite often. I got interested in terriers. And Cliffy was a great dog man uh, and a fabulous terrier person. In fact, Bobby and I and Cliffy used to travel together. We used to caravan together. And we picked his brain like crazy. I'm sure, yeah. But That'd be a great education. It was. I was very fortunate at that time. So would you consider, well, you had, you had Ted as a mentor. Was Ted considered a mentor as well? Teddy gave me the, yes, yes. Teddy gave me the opportunity to surround myself with wonderful dog people. And I, I feel very fortunate, Will, that I entered the dog game and the dog community at the time and place I did. Because I was surrounded by, I guess you'd call them connoisseurs of the dog game. Uh, we used to set up next to Janie and Bob. I even watched Andy show her last stand at Blue. She walked out of the ring and said, that's it, small dogs from now on. <laughs> uh, but who else could I? Johnny Peluga was Teddy's partner. Mm -hmm. Not many people saw him because he really went to dog shows. He'd go to specialties, and, and basically that was it. But he was a great trimmer and a great conditioner of show dogs. And I, I probably owe him a lot. In yeah. fact, I know I owe him a lot because he brought me into that, that phase of the game. I mean, I realized I wasn't a, a Frank Sabella or I with the timing of Jamie and at the hands of, of Annie. She was amazing with that. But I wanted to learn to trim dogs with the best of them, and I, and I think I did a fairly good job. That was my, uh, my forte, I guess you'd call it. Also, down the road from us a couple of miles away was Alva. Wow. And, yeah. <laughs> was, I, used to, I used to pass his antique shop and go and always smoke dogs. And he was a wonderful, wonderful man, and had more knowledge than anybody I think I've ever known as far as as far as drugs and, and things he said then that meant nothing to me really until later on and later on in years. In fact when I started judging, I remembered things he was telling me. Oh, sure, yeah. Wow. Down the road, Elda. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Other other mentors. You were there other mentors that were important in your life in dogs that, that really oh, were yeah. Many, 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 many. Um, Jamie. Yeah. Jenny would grab onto any youngster, and I was a youngster, that showed any kind of a work ethic and any kind of an interest. 
In fact, I used to, I, she always grabbed me to show a couple of boxes for her. And I would come out in the ring and, and say, what about this and what about that? And she would say, look. And she showed me the mouth. I said, you want this brody one on the drill like this? And she turned profile. I remember, I remember when I started judging, I did the same thing. She turned profile and says, but you want the nose turned up a little on that. And she was wonderful. I she was very good to very good to anybody that was interested in dog. She was like a surrogate mother to me, is all I can tell you. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I was very fortunate at that time. Sounds like you were surrounded by them. Anybody else come to mind even later on in your career? Oh, Frank Sabella, Annie. When I started judging, Annie became very. I thought I should say not Annie. I became very close to Annie. And we used to talk all the time, fight up and up after that. Uh, when Frank, when I started judging, Frank grabbed a hold of me. And I mean, I've always, he was, well, you know, Frank, I was amazed at, at the hands he had and the timing he had. And he once said to me, he said, you know, you go out there alone. Well, I'll tell you the whole story. Yeah. I think it was the this is the second or third sporting group I ever did. The day before, the top sporting dog in the country won best in show. I never saw him because when, when I gave up showing dogs, I went back to graduate school for a year and I really didn't pay attention. And this dog came in my ring in the breed ring. It was the last breed I had in a day. And I was late. When I started judging dogs, I was slow as hell. And I didn't like the dog at all. And when I did the, I placed him for him. And I was coming back to the photographer taking pictures of Frank. So why do you look so mad at yourself, though, Leo? I said, I'm aggravated. He said, why are you so aggravated? I said, I did not like that dog. And I gave him a fourth place ribbon only because of his reputation. And he grabbed me with a collar. And he said, now listen to me. You're a good enough dog person. You go out there. And the only one you have to please is yourself. He said, you're not responsible for anybody else's opinion. And I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. And I, and I, and I thanked him many times for telling me that. What year did you stop showing dogs, Elliot? Professionally. And I stopped showing dogs in 93 at Montgomery. In fact, I stopped showing dogs before Montgomery, but, but Betty Hissler wanted me to show a dog at Montgomery. <laughs> And the last dog I showed, I handed it to Mother, to, to, to the great Duchess up there from Canada. And, and that was it. That was the summer of uh, the fall of 93 or 94. Wow. <laughs> 93, I judged my first dog show, July of 94. That was pretty quick, actually. There you go. I, uh, I, I showed for Betty up here. She was quite the character. I wish we should do, a, should do a whole interview about Betty. <laughs> um, so when you when you uh, when you were f finished showing dogs, you went right, right into judging. Who who influenced you the most when you started doing that? Yes, yeah, so you, you spoke about Annie and and, and Frank. And the first day I judged at Holyoke, and the next ring was Mother Jane, and she came over to me and she flipped my book and said, "Here's what you're going to do." And she flipped my book across and she said, when, when you do this, mark this this way, mark that that way. And, and, and she showed me how to, how to handle the paperwork right, right then and there. Very, very influential on that. And very helpful. Very helpful. That reminds me, Mr. Ryan, I'm going to back us up now. I want to know the story about Dennis. Iris said her Dennis. I want to know that story because Janie started off showing Dennis and then she retired and you took over Dennis. I want to know that story. That's the only dog I ever asked for, Will. Oh, yeah? I, I watched him through the classes. And when I heard Jamie... Back there that you made. <laughs> and when I heard him, when I heard she was retiring, I didn't ask her at first. But, but a couple of weeks down the line, I went over and says, I said, Janie, who do you have? To, who's getting the Irish setter? And she looked at me and she says, Why do you want him? I said, Oh, yeah. She says, Do you have a good client from? 
I said, I do. And she said, let me see what I can do, because like Sydney Treffery, who was owned them and whatnot. I got a call from Janie about four days later and says, if you want to do it, you want to take them home from the garden after I show them? I said, oh, yeah. And uh, that's all she wrote. That dog taught me a lot. And I'm sure, yeah. I was always grateful to Janie for allowing me to have it because at that time I was really, I was really a youngster. Nobody knew me. If Janie kept that dog and she was in physical shape, he would have had 100 bets in shows. Oh, I imagine, yeah. We're talking about Madelard's anticipation. This is what knows that. He was a, a, he was a, a, he's a landmark in Irish Hitter as far as I'm concerned. So I'll never forget Dennis at the group. So the garden with you. That was an experience. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. It was an experience for all of us to watch it. I remember it. Are there any other dogs that come to mind that you, you wish you had shown or wish you could have owned or? There was an Alha dog that made a great impression on me. In fact, he was still one of my, I would say he was still, you know, I'm not going to say he was the best dog I've ever seen, but if I had a list 10, he'd be in there. Which dog and, is that? And that was Winslow the Foxhound. Okay. The English Foxhound that George. that George showed, and I remember the first time I saw him even. I think it was at Somerset Hills, and Desi and I were traveling together. And we were set up right in front of the group ring. He was brushing his chow out. And I think I was showing a spring event or an English copper. I was working on the sporting dog in it. And, and George walks in the ring, and his dog just steps up and stands there like a porcelain doll. And everything was fit together on him like unbelievable. I mean, I knew the proportions were right. You knew everything fit together was right. He had great feet. He had great bone. When we left, he, he won the group that night under Billy Kendrick. I remember that also. When we were driving out, I said, Desi, grab my standard book. And we went through the standard of the English Foxhound. Because the only thing I questioned, the only thing we questioned at the time, it was a very pretty Foxhound type-wise, not this quality. Well, being shown a couple of years before, with an entirely different headpiece. So I said, we, we read the standard, we're trying to figure out if this, if this dog was correct, which he was. The other interesting thing I remember about that is, did I answer the question you asked before? Well, we were, we were speaking about dogs that came to mind and you were in the middle of telling me about Winslow and how much, what an impression he, he made on you and, and you and Desi were looking up the standard as you were driving back from the show. He looked like a porcelain doll when I saw him. We just wanted to make sure it was correct. <laughs> and then we read, we read every word in the standard. But you see, I think that's what it's about when you see an aha dog like that. Yeah. You know, you, you want a little look in because you want to learn from it. You, know, you want the dog to teach you something with that. And uh, yeah, he was just wonderful. He was just wonderful. And since then, they've changed the standard because, like I, I mentioned, they... We're reading the standard along, and it says cannonbone. Cannonbone. I'm scratching my head in there. I said, Desi, there's no cannonbone on a dog. What is it called? Cannonbone? Cannonbone. What, is, what does that mean, Ellie? Four, it's the foreleg of a horse, an equine. Okay. But, but, then, but then we came to realize that the Foxhound standard was written by masters of the hunt. Exactly. Not by, so they talked in horse terms as opposed to dog terms. It was interesting. It was, he was a wonderful dog. Though. George did very well with him. Did a beautiful job with him. Oh yeah, he stands out in my head too. He was amazing to watch, and I, yeah. I can still see George going best under under Tony Hodges with him somewhere. And I, I can't remember the exact place, but I was there with Mister Eldridge. I remember seeing him go best with Tony Hodges. Fabulous person, Ted. Oh God, yeah. I remember. First of all, I love the English set of bits that you showed that I gave the Greek to the garden the first time I judged at the garden. Oh, Adele. The yeah. What was her name? Adele. Adele. The color of my love, yeah, yeah. She's over there on the wall. <laughs> she was very, very feminine, and she had, had the strength of what I think an English set of should have. She had a body, too. She was extremely moderate. And I thought she was beautiful. 
I love Andrea. Yeah. She was like, I got her. Uh, this isn't about me, but I, I, I got her when she was like 13 months old and she didn't have any hair. And it was just, just it was, it was an aha moment for me. I watched Lee, the owner, run her down my driveway and I thought, that's the one I want. And it was actually Mrs. Clark. I'm getting off topic. It was Mrs. Clark that sent me to Lee and Louie in Quebec to look for an English center. So, and this, they brought me. <laughs> Well, they brought me two. They brought me an adult, fully coated or orange dog, and then this young blue bitch. And the orange dog was lovely, but the blue bitch just blew my mind. So, and I was just yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, I'm off topic. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I'm going to put you on the spot again. I judged the Irish Center National. I forgot the year it was, and I did bitch it. You came in with a veteran bitch that knocked my socks off. And I think your family bred it. Yeah, my dad bred that bitch, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was her registered name? Uh, nine gave, to twelve. Nine to five? Nine to five, yeah. Nine to five. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's she, how much she impressed me. I think she was the best bitch I saw that day at all. I, I wish I had shown her as a young bitch. You know, I, my dad showed her and he did fine with her, but I was always in I always had something on the go and I was excited to show her when I got a chance to. Annie. Annie was her name. And she won a bunch, especially from the veterans class. Oh, I would see. So I would say so. Yeah. No. She to win that day, but that's but that's I didn't say that. Oh yes, I did. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but she was. Do you remember the dog? I, the the Piper dog. I did all the best hundred best in shows with. And you judged him in the garden. and made a big contest at him and him in there. The, uh -huh. Um, that's his grandmother. Okay. Okay. <laughs> quality goes to quality. Yeah, for now, sure. I, now, I'll, now I'll listen. It's your show, so you can answer the question. You can answer the question. <laughs> I'm I'll off. just shut up. Get off track. <laughs> well, there must be other dogs that, that have that aha moment for you that you wish you would have shown as well, or, or even read English setter wise because you read English setters. Um, there must be. I'd like to know what, what's in your head about gun dogs for sure. Oh, well. There were a couple of very special English setters at that time. You remember Haji? Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. He always, he always struck me as being something very, very, and he was something special besides being a great sire. Yeah. Uh, there are a number of them. You know, I, I can't put my finger on, on 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 any of them right now to say this, 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 and this, but yeah, I will. I will. Oriental J. Oh, Irish Setter bitch, yeah. Uh, she was a beautiful. She's still, she's still the best Irish Setter bitch I think I've ever seen. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's the, she's the, she, you know, you see a dog and it's a picture in your mind. And she's the picture in my mind of, of what an Irish Setter bitch should look like. Yeah, while we're on Irish Setters, you, you showed, you showed for Travelda. Did you show for Travelda when Ted was still alive or just with Mrs. E? I don't remember. Oh. Ted's the one that made me. I showed. I showed for Ann after. Yeah, I remember you showed after, you. after Ted passed away. But when I worked for Teddy, Ted sent the bitch to Teddy, which which is a mistake because Teddy, you know, at that time cockers were in a heyday, and we'd wind up showing cockers, and we he had to hand the bitch off to somebody else. But I can't remember the bitch's name. But I, I she was kind of like my dog for a while. And got, I got attached to her, and I always found Irish said it was very exciting from that point on. Yeah. I remember when you were showing for, for Mrs. E, because I was talking to her about, I think, I was showing a dog at the time named Impresario, and she was, I, I think you had spoken to her about breeding to him, I can't remember. I remember talking to you as combined, and Mrs. E was there, that's all I remember. I was young, again, I was 22 or something, I don't know. <laughs> So. I miss those people. Oh, God, me too. Me too. Uh, <laughs> very special. Yeah. So you, you, uh, you tell me anything about Betty for all our Canadian viewers, too? Clear. When you were showing for Betty Hislop. Yes. I'd like to know something about that, because everybody up here love, love Betty, and she is, she's a legend of the sport up here. So. The Duchess, I call her. We, um... <laughs> The first time I showed dogs for her at the garden, I won the breed. 
I'm trying to think of the name of the dog. It doesn't matter. And I'm standing there holding the dog up my arm by, by number one, and she walks past and she glares at me. <laughs> and then I, I found out when I, you know, if she doesn't win, I don't, she doesn't matter if her dog wins. She wanted to win. She was extremely competitive. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. And she would, oh, I can tell you, Betty, here's some stories. I love that lady. But let's hear some. <laughs> Dad and I have gone to the dog show, I think it was at Binghamton, New York at the time. You've been there, the Binghamton shows. And, and Betty was coming down, and Betty comes over to me. In fact, we got to the dog show ground like at 6.30. She was already there. You know, cans couldn't be 2 o'clock, but she and spraying Mr. Groom all over him. <laughs> and she says, let me show you my new bed. <laughs> So I go, I go see this van. It was the first minivan I'd seen. It was blue Ford, I remember. You know, Candania blue. She always wore a, dress, a blue dress when she showed dogs. And she always had blue towels. And I, was, I we used to kid and say that was Candania blue. So I, I went over and I looked at the van. I said, Duchess, this is a van for a teenager. She saw it had six, eight speakers in the sound system. It had these fancy wheels on it. And she said, oh yeah, you're very expensive. Taxes in Canada are terrible. Really, I said, well, let me ask you a question, Duchess. How long, how, how many days did you go on and, and, and complain to the salesman until you got exactly what you wanted? <gasps> and she got a little huffy and walked away and Donna said, now you did it. So we're brushing dogs. 20 minutes later, she comes over. I hear her. She's pulling on my shirt sleeve. I turn around. She said, three days. <laughs> three days. She, she had to have... Oh, now here's another story. We were at a can specialty. We were at a can specialty. Well, we won the breed. When when is his dog, reserve when his bitch. I remember, I remember distinctly. And she complained all night because she went second in the puppy class with her puppy. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, you, you know Betty. I mean, I love the dearly, but that was her. <laughs> the last dog I showed for, I can't remember his name either, but um, I was showing some sporting dog that was doing winning. But we won the terrier group that day, and I won the sporting group as well. So I, I stayed on the Irish Center, and my assistant, Yvonne, stayed on the, on the cairn, and Yvonne was this bubbly girl, and she had this big, big hair. Like, she had big hair. And she ended up going best in the show with the Cairn. And I'll never forget, Betty, was, she was so excited. She said, well, what are we going to do with the picture with that young girl with that hair? Because <laughs> 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 that girl with that hair. <laughs> well, she complained to me once for about two months because my veterinarian charged $3 more for a vaccination than her. <laughs> We're at the show, and she comes over to me and says, will you and Donna have dinner with me? And I have people I sold the dog to. We're going to have dinner together. The rest of them, I said, it'd be a pleasure. I'd love to have dinner with you, Betty. So with this, she has about nine people at the table. And I'm, she always sat me next to her, and she hands me up the bill and the credit card. said, fill this out for me. And I said, you know what? You've been complaining for three months to me about a $3 bill. You're just like your dogs. If you don't have a good scrap and a good fight once in a while, you, you don't love it. <laughs> and that was her, but she, she, was, she was a wonderful dog lady. Oh, my God, yes. I, I treasure the times I went to Karen Danny just to sit and talk to her. We'd go oh, out yeah. to the show and just, <laughs> it was something. It was something. <laughs> well, she had, I, I, I always loved dog art, which you know, I think. She had a Landseer painting on the side of her desk up against the wall that was full of dust. And that was, it did, you know, that was her, typical. Oh, I know, I know. We went there, and I took, I took all the girls that were working for me, went there for dinner, and we were sitting there, and, and there was a stack of magazines on the mantel over the fireplace, and there were great day magazines from, like, the 40s. And <laughs> I think one of the girls said, asked her about them, and she just said she didn't have time to put them away. <laughs> Yep, yep, that's her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well. 
Any other dogs come to mind, Elliot? Before I change topics on you? That you've judged. Rufus, Rufus, Rufus the Bull Terrier. Uh, the first time I saw Rufus was at the AKC show, which was in Long Beach that time, California. And I was saying, I, I, well, anyway, I judged that particular breed that day, too. And they had a huge entry because the day before, David Merriam did a specialty. And Bull Terrier people, which I'm singing to the choir, you know, then they come out for specialties and run show. And I walked down the line, I'm checking in my dogs, and there was, there was at least a dozen special. And I come and I look at this thing, and I step back, it's a holy mackerel. And then I walked down the line and looked at him again, because I wanted to see, you know, substance and bone, who had what. And he was a knockout to me. And I said to myself, just don't have a wry mouth. I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's undershot, I don't care if it's overshot, just don't have a wry. Well, anyway, it turned out he had a perfect bite. And he had all his teeth. I checked later on when I judged him. I asked, can I go look at his mouth? I mean, it was beautiful. Yeah. He was an aha dog to me. And I gave him second in the group at the garden when I judged the Terry group there a couple of months later. And it was a pleasure to do. Yeah. You know, there's, there's certain dogs that you always, that teach you. You know, the, the judging dogs is a, is a, it's a learning process. It is. It's a learning process. And it's a wonderful learning process. Yeah. Well, you're, you're known for your gun dogs. Do you have any, I'm uh, well, not just the gun dogs, but that's how I see you as a gun dog guy, but you hear about a lot more than that. But as a, as a new judge coming out, do you have any advice for a new judge coming up judging? Oh, yeah. Oh, don't judge on mechanics. I don't think you should judge a breed unless you have a picture in your mind of what you want the breed to be like. I mean, if you put a dozen dogs in front of you, you should know who's a competition without even touching them. You should know the proportions. You should know the silhouette on them. You should walk down the line and say, okay, are these dozen dogs that's between these three? Even before you put your hand on them. But I think too many judges judge on parts. We're a very mechanical society. If you want to learn something, a subject you want, in, in our educational system, I think they teach you the mechanics of the subject. So people will come in, they'll judge dogs up and down and say, oh, let me look at that hind quarter, let me look at that fore quarter, let me see how they move. That's secondary. That's secondary. I'm, I'll never feel what Alva said once to me. We'll go back to Alva. We said, sitting there, he said, if you want to develop a picture in your mind than you should of a breed, and you want to learn about the breed, go back and look at the history of the breed and understand the underlying reason for why the standard was written. That always stuck with me. Good. But, and then sometimes you say to people, you know, the best dog in the ring may not have the best hindquarter. And it doesn't register. It's frustrating. Yeah. That's one thing Mr. E taught me. Um, I was a kid, but he always taught me to try to just tell me the good thing. He said anybody could tell you the bad things about these dogs. He always wanted me to tell them the good things about these dogs. Absolutely. He never let me say anything bad about them. If I, if he always like I he he would say things like um I wish he was stronger in his back, but he wouldn't say he had a bad top one. Like you know, oh yeah, and that, that's just always who could be the best one in the ring, if, even if he was a little weak in his back. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So that, your advice, I'm going to put two hats on you here, Elliot. Do you have advice for new handlers? Yeah. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> Don't rush it. No. Uh, Bobby Fish and I used to talk, well, we used to, we used to learn together and talk to, talk to each other. And he even said, to be a good handler and understand the breed, you should learn how to scissor dog. You should learn how to pull hair, and you should learn how to groom because then you're going to get into the nitty gritty of the whole thing. I think too many people rush it. Yeah. You know, they they don't want to they don't want to they don't want to do the the due diligence and learn about the breeds before they want to jump in and show them. Uh, this, I, don't get me wrong; there's some very very talented people around. 
There's some very talented sporting dog people. There's some very talented, wonderful trimmers and poodles right now out there. Yeah. Well, I agree. And I, I think you learn a lot by trimming the dogs. Because you, in, Absolutely. you have your mind's eye picture of a dog and you, you, you try to replicate that. It's not always the same. I always complain when I see a, um, a generic trim, like some well, one trim on every dog. There's no such thing, so, as far as I'm concerned. And that you, not only as far as you're concerned, that's the truth. There are too many people that trim the same way on every dog instead of trimming to the virtues of the dog. You know, uh, under, -trim ver under trim faults and over trim virtues. Show off the virtues, and if you have a fault on a dog, leave hair on it. Don't trim it. But people don't get that. And a lot of them trim the same way on each dog, and they don't bring out the virtues in a particular dog. Out of all the dog show people of our past, Elliot, who do you wish, who do you miss the most and wish you could speak to again? Oh, Annie. Annie and Janie. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. You're getting stuck again, but I miss Annie and I miss Janie. They were very, both very good to me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one last question then, Elliot. If you could speak to the 20 year old Elliot Weiss, what would you tell Elliot? Wow. <laughs> if I could speak to the 20 year old Elliot Weiss, that's a good question. You know, well, I feel very lucky. I didn't mind getting up in the morning and going to work. I like what I did. So it's a tough question to ask. Maybe, maybe I should have realized it sooner and gotten, in, gotten into it sooner, but I didn't know what I was getting into when it happened. It just sort of, the door opened and I walked in. And you made and an impression on us all, so. I couldn't hear you, Will. I'm sorry again. I so, said, well, well, you may have started late, but you made a huge impression on us, on the sport, so. Well, thank you for saying that. I don't know, I don't know how much of an impression I made, but I, enjoyed, I had a good time doing it. That's good. Well, thanks, Elliot. Thanks for giving us this time. I hope we got a lot of good stuff there. A few pauses in between, but we'll work those out. Um, I appreciate your time. It's really good to see you. Well, thanks for having me. Okay, well, and we'll talk soon. I'm I like what you're doing, keep up the good work because, the, first of all, there's no shows, and second of all, the shows got so big, it's not. I miss the camaraderie of, of the old days when we were in a big show was a thousand dogs. Yeah. And the professional handlers at that time were, at least in, in my crowd, helped each other, taught each other. Uh, there was a lot of camaraderie there. It didn't matter who won, as long as, as, long as the dogs were in and presented right. right. Yeah. Thanks again. All right, Ella, thank you. Have a great day. You too, guy. Well, thank you so much, Elliot. That was very entertaining. And we had a good time. It was always good seeing you. Can't wait to see you at a dog show. Uh, so if you like what we're doing here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button, okay? And if you want to get a hold of me or send me a message or any ideas, get, get a hold of me at dogshowtips at gmail.com. Or if you just want to find out what's happening in my world, go to willalexander.net. Until next week, guys, take care.